Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the latest and greatest updates to one of your favorite Nintendo Switch emulators, Yuzu. In case anyone was wondering why I haven't released any videos in the last 7-8 to eight days, the main reason for that is my power supply blew up in my main PC and since I didn't have a dedicated backup, I had to wait till literally today, 3 hours ago in fact, before making this video to get a new one and get everything back up and running. The reason I bring this up is because it's actually the money donated by all of my patrons that paid for this new power supply. If it wasn't for you guys, I would have had to wait another week and a half to get the power supply that I needed for my system. So again, a massive thank you to all of you guys for all your pledges and donations. All right, back on topic. The reason you guys are here is to see the latest updates to Yuzu. And believe me, there's been a lot of stuff added even in the last week alone. We're going to be taking a look at the brand new update that covers ARB, which is a brand new method of using OpenGL on this emulator that drastically improves performance in some games and also removes basically 99% of the shader caching stutter you may have seen before when using OpenGL. We're going to be taking a look at the brand new macro jet, which has greatly improved performance in pretty much every single game. Then we're also going to be taking a look at a brand new feature which is called Asynchronous V-Sync. This change was kind of stealthily added in the last 3-4 to four days and if you have noticed your games playing and just generally being a lot more smooth, this new feature addition is likely the reason for it. On top of these more major updates, I'm also going to take a look at a few minor ones, including a fresh look at game compatibility in some of the most highly requested games you guys have asked me to cover in the past. Now before we get stuck in and look at all of these changes, I want to give a very, very happy welcome back to YouTube to Simply Austin. If you guys don't know him, he's another YouTuber who mainly focuses on emulation and after a bit of a hiatus, he is now back making videos and releasing them on YouTube. I'm sure a lot of you guys are already aware of his YouTube channel. If you aren't, you'll find a link to it down in this video's description. Head on over there, subscribe to him. This guy is super, super nice dude. He has done a lot for the emulation community. So I just wanted to give him a warm welcome back to YouTube. Welcome back, dude. You have been surely missed. Okay, now that all that waffle is out of the way, let's jump straight into it. Let's kick things off by taking a look at the brand new OpenGL ARB update. Now, it's a little bit confusing to explain exactly what ARB is, so while I'm going to do my best to explain it, I'm also going to be giving you some demonstrations of what it does and what it brings to the table for this emulator. So, currently in Yuzu and most emulators, in fact, we have been using an OpenGL which is called OpenGL GLSL or OpenGL Shading Language. This was created, confusingly enough, by the OpenGL ARB or OpenGL Architecture Review Board to give developers more direct control over the graphics pipelines without having to use ARB assembly language. It is this ARB assembly language that has now been added in this brand new update to the emulator. To make things a little bit less confusing, let's look at it this way. The OpenGL Architecture Review Board made both GLSL and OpenGL ARB assembly language. Both of these are now available to use in a Yuzu emulator. Confusing descriptions aside, let's now take a look at what this OpenGL ARB assembly language brings to the table on Yuzu. To demonstrate this, we're going to be using Super Smash Bros Ultimate. On the left of my screen, we have OpenGL GLSL. On the right, we have OpenGL ARB assembly language. What we're going to be doing is a quick demonstration of just how much faster ARB is at compiling shaders for games, especially like Super Smash Bros that have lots and lots of shaders and a very, very large shader cache. If it isn't obvious by the demonstration so far, the main benefit of OpenGL ARB is the fact that it is blazing fast at building and compiling shaders in gameplay. Not only is it many, many times faster than OpenGL GLSL, it is also much faster than Vulkan through SPIRV. In this short test where I let Super Smash Bros Ultimate run for 1 minute 30 seconds, on the ARB assembly language setting, it compiled 1696 shaders while on the older GLSL it only compiled 264. Based off the smoothness of gameplay you've seen demonstrated, it's fairly obvious to see the advantages of ARB. 
Now, unfortunately, not everyone is going to be able to reap the benefits of using this new assembly language. And since Intel and AMD GPUs simply do not support using ARB in this way, only NVIDIA GPU users are going to be able to use this new setting. For anyone wanting to try it out, you will find it in the latest early access builds in the Graphics Advanced tab under Use Assembly Shaders. Okay, let's keep the ball rolling and take a look at the next major addition, or at least one that I myself think is a major addition, Asynchronous VSync. Again, as with assembly shaders, this one's a little bit hard to describe in words, so instead I'm going to use a little visual and audio demonstration. Let's jump into some Pokemon Sword gameplay and take a quick listen and look at how the game used to sound. As you can hear in that battle transition, it's pretty nasty. Every time you compile a shader, the audio completely cuts out. Again, as a further demonstration, let's do Electro Ball with Pikachu and see how the game sounds. As you can hear, every time we previously would compile a shader, the audio would just completely cut out and stop playing back. Let's take a listen to what it sounds like now using Asynchronous VSync. This demonstration is done using ARB as well as the new Async VSync implementation. I think we'll all agree it sounds a hell of a lot better. As you saw there, in the battle transition, there was no audio lag when we were compiling our shaders. Let's again use our Pikachu's Electro Ball move. This is what Asynchronous VSync does when combined with ARB shaders. Not only do we get really, really fast shader compile times on OpenGL, but we now get no audio stutter in between shader compilation thanks to this new VSync implementation. This update kind of went under people's radar, especially so being overshadowed by ARB's release in the last two days. However, I personally think it's a really, really cool upgrade and definitely a welcome one. Yet another change that was kind of overshadowed by the release of ARB was the implementation of a macro JIT and HLE macros. In the emulator, a macro basically sets a bunch of GPU registers. These also tell the emulator how to draw specific things in games. Previously, for this task, they used an interpreter, and while it was functional and quite fast, it was nowhere near as fast as the newly implemented JIT. With the new HLE macros, they essentially don't have to execute the programs anymore, they just set any registers which the macro would have done originally and then start drawing them immediately. Thanks to these two brand new implementations, many games have seen a very nice performance jump. Okay, so let's move things along and take a look at some improved game compatibility, starting things off with Unreal Engine games on Yuzu. In the past, it's been a bit of a meme or a joke in the Yuzu community that every Unreal Engine game has basically rendered like rainbow-coloured puke. However, thanks to some changes in Yuzu's texture cache, mainly implementing rendering to 3D textures, this rainbow colouring issue is no longer a problem. Unreal Engine games are by no means completely fixed on the emulator now. Octopath Traveler itself still has a lot of rendering issues and graphical corruptions that happen at times, but regardless, it's still really cool to see these games get graphical improvements, bringing them ever closer towards a playable state. Luigi's Mansion 3 has also seen several graphical changes. For example, when you use the high GPU accuracy setting, you now get consistently rendered fonts, better lighting effects from your torch and other light sources in-game, and on top of this, when using the ARB assembly shaders option, you will no longer get broken blacked out graphics when moving from room to room. Luigi's Mansion 3 is far from perfect on Yuzu at the moment. For example, when transitioning from room to room, your game will sometimes corrupt its graphics like you can see on screen right now, there is a strange hue applied to the game. And also, when moving around the environment, the game's shadows will wildly corrupt and flicker, sometimes completely stopping rendering at all. Animal Crossing New Horizon has also seen a very nice both performance and graphical upgrade in the last few days. The Macro JIT and Macro HLE implementation boosted its performance by between 3 to 8 frames per second on my systems, and on top of this, they fixed the strange black flashing that could appear on the game's ground textures. This was fixed by marking vertex buffers as dirty after buffer cache invalidation. 
New Horizons does still suffer with a softlock at the very end of the game, so until that is fixed, this game cannot be considered fully playable. Speaking of fully playable games, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition is now considered playable on Yuzu Emulator. It does still have a few graphical bugs, but for the most part, it is rendering and running pretty well. In some of the later stages, you should expect lower performance in some of these open areas, especially so if you have an older CPU. At the present moment, for any of the Xenoblade titles, it is recommended that you use a high GPU accuracy in order to have the least possible texture corruptions and graphical bugs. It's not just Definitive Edition that has seen a big upgrade to its performance and render quality, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and Xenoblade Chronicles Torna are also now in a very, very usable state on Yuzu. As with Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, both of these titles also require you to use a GPU accuracy of high for the best possible experience. Hopefully we get even greater performance and more graphical fixes for these games. Personally, I cannot wait for all three of these titles to be fully playable at maximum performance levels. The final change we're going to take a look at in today's roundup is a PR that allows the joining of a separate image and a sampler pairs. This simple change allowed many games, for example Bioshock, Bioshock 2 and Bioshock Infinite Remastered to start rendering and as you can see in gameplay, make these games very, very playable on the emulator. Now unfortunately, while lots of games do now render with this change, the Bioshock remasters which were just released do have a saving issue and also since all three of these games have an end user license agreement at the very start of them, require you to have a save in order to make them boot. If you're looking for game saves for Bioshock 1 and 2, you'll find links for them down in this video's description. While I did cover a lot of games compatibility in this video, there are many others that I want to take individual looks at. For example, Super Mario Odyssey and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, both of those games having seen very, very nice improvements in the last few days alone. Make sure to hit the subscribe button to be notified as soon as I release videos taking a look at each of those games individually. For now at least, that's going to be it for this video. As always, if there are any games you'd like to see me test, just let me know down below in the comments section. And as always, for my channel's supporters over on Patreon, you can either request games for me to test over there, or you can do so in the Patreon exclusive chat channel over on my Discord. Once again guys, thank you all very much for watching, I greatly appreciate it. As always, remember to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.